Hey everyone, I'm here to show you one of my favorite JHS Drive pedals, one that I'm really proud of, and one that I think doesn't get a lot of love. We first released it in 2013 as the version one Moonshine. It had three controls, volume, tone, and drive, and a toggle. And now, as you saw me playing, we have this version. This came out in 2018, and it implements a clean blend specifically focused on doing dumbbell tones and for bass players. So this is really, really cool, really, really exciting. And you'll also find this in our double barrel pedal where we put it together with a Morning Glory. Now, when it first came out, it was this revision or modification or new version of an old, old pedal I had called the Low Drive. So I revised that and put it back out and wanted a different name. And this whole moonshine thing was interesting because we were talking about screamer circuits, which this is the basis of, but it's highly modified. We were talking about, you know, modifying them and anyone can make a tube screamer and they're kind of all over the place and it's like the wild west. And it, it made me think about making moonshine. I actually come from a family with some history of that my dad would have to deliver moonshine for my grandpa when he was young and it was a crazy different world but this is kind of a tribute to that part of my family i guess and the name is also this pun on anyone can make it and you can make it out in the wild so before i jump into the specs and the controls and all that stuff i actually want to show you the original teaser from 2013 it only has 13,000 views so immediately this is going to pass that and it's really exciting to show so here's that video This was our first teaser video and it's kind of amazing. We went out in the woods and we just put this whole thing together and those jugs that you saw in the video, those are actually my grandpa's old jugs. So just a fun, fun thing to show you. Um, and we didn't have this channel. We didn't have this following and we didn't have this platform really. So it's fun to kind of re-show that let you see it and throw back to an entirely different era of JHS. So let's look at these controls and let me go over them with you. It's really simple. You have volume, drive, and tone. And that would be what remains from this V1. Then you have a clean, and this is parallel clean. So picture your guitar signal goes in through this cable and has through this pot touching the output clean but there's also a circuit so when you go in it's kind of splitting like a y so you go through the dirty part and the clean part and this blends those together it's really popular in studios and with bass players and it allows you to do things here you have this plus minus this is more headroom less headroom and what happens is as you turn the gain up you can bring your clean in and that's where you get this really interesting, extremely amp-like tone. And specifically, it's kind of this thing that people throw around that I actually think is really hard to identify, the term dumbbell sound. So what is the dumbbell sound? There's actually some videos on this. I believe Rhett Scholl did one, but it's hard to nail down. I've played eight, eight or so dumbbells, and they all sound different, and most of them I don't like. 
but there is this consensus of a certain sound that comes from a dumble, and it's this gain, dirt, sustain, but also the real transparent nature of your guitar in that. And it is unique and it is strange. It's heavy in the mids, it's got distortion, but it has really great attack and nuance. It has a lot of touch sensitivity, to say that buzzword. And because of that clean blend in this pedal, I really think it pulls it off well. What you heard in the opening track was me playing the bass through the moonshine, a drum loop, and also the guitar through that same setting. So one thing that gets overlooked with this pedal is that it is in a lot of ways probably the best bass overdrive we offer because of that clean input and because it has a lot of capacity to keep the low end. It doesn't filter it out. It doesn't high pass it as much as other pedals do. And that's a lot of that woolly thick distortion tone that you find in it because Volume creates overdrive and distortion in a circuit as it overdrives parts of the circuit, but bass plus volume is even more. Bass is one of the best distortion techniques you can use in circuit design. And so in this pedal, it's actually kind of overloading it a little with the bass content, and that makes it really nice and really chewy. And so let me demonstrate it now just on the bass. On this track, I'm gonna lay down a hip hop type beat and put a simple bass line over it with this tone that you saw here. Then I'm gonna lay a guitar on it with a similar setting so that you can see the contrast of the electric guitar with not as much bass content distorting and then the bass obviously distorting more. So let's do that. just put on some big hall reverb, a quarter note delay, and leave the pedal as it was. So leaving the moonshine just as it was. Notice as I play, the harder I pick, the dirtier it gets. And that's that tube amp response, that pick attack, that touch sensitivity. And it's really, really strong in this pedal. So notice it seems to sustain although it's clean and that's just a really cool part of that circuit.
This has been really fun to show you, to walk you through this pedal. Also, there are some very rare hand paint versions. Let me put this under the camera here so you can see. These are very, very few and far between. I actually saw that Brad Paisley had one of these. I randomly saw it in a photo. Um, I think there are like 15 of these ever made. These were hand painted by some local Kansas City artists. Just super, super cool piece of history. This pedal's been along for the ride. I mean, 2013 to now, that's a decade. We're a totally different company. I'm a totally different person. And this circuit has evolved with us. So if you're looking for an overdrive that could do something clean and dirty at the same time, can work on bass as well as guitar, and really and honestly give your guitar something different than all the other Tube Screamer variants, that parallel thing really, really does that. And when you pick up a Strat, it's amazing. When you pick up humbuckers, it's amazing. It's great. I've even used it on acoustic because when you add a little bit of dirt in parallel in a mix, it makes it cut through. If you're listening to it by itself, you might go, oh, the bass is a little dirty. I don't like that. But when you place it in a mix, it pops. All the greatest mix engineers do this. And it's been a trick that people have done for decades and decades to make an instrument cut through all the other things that are going on. Today's record time is brought to you by the band's best of greatest hits, I guess. Um, I really, really love this record. As you can tell, I bought it at Half Price Books for $5.99. It's in great condition. I mean, if you're not familiar with the band, please go listen to a compilation of some sort, greatest hits or whatever. Up on Cripple Creek, um, there's just, there's so many. The Weight, everyone's heard The Weight, I think. Um, Old Dixie Down, Ophelia. It's these drum tones, these guitar tracks, the way they recorded all of this stuff, the connection to Dylan. I love, love, love this record. I love all of their records, but this one's good. Sometimes the greatest hits thing is like, yeah, put it on and it's it's the, the vintage playlist of sorts. There's no filler here. It's all fantastic. So go check it out. If you're not familiar, let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have a favorite band song, put that in the comments as well. This has been really, really fun. Thanks for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful day and go watch some other Moonshine videos or contact your local dealer, pick one up and try it. That would be a real honor for me. So that's all. Bye-bye.